CataractCoach.com, hereditary lens subluxation. What's going to be your approach for this difficult case? Now, let me show you this case. You see the patient has a lot of dislocation of the crystal lens, not much cataract formation, a young patient. Starting off with a pair of knees here, another pair of knees is there. All righty. Now, what's going in? Looks like it's probably some anesthetic or maybe some epinephrine or phenylephrine. Make an incision. I like that you're hitting the lumbo vessels there. Nice looking incision here. Some viscoazid to tamponade that one area. I like that idea as well. And now take out the bubbles. I like that too. A little bit of tripan blue dye. Now this is a special tripan blue dye, much stronger than typical. And the surgeon's going to leave it on the on the lens for a long time. Notice it's not going in the vitreous cavity. Now did I tell you about retinarounds.com? If you push that dye in the vitreous cavity, you're going to have to do a vitrectomy. So you better learn from retinarounds.com. Again, our amazing sister channel, so much to learn. Now, visclad's going inside the eye here. There's that stained lens capsule, so why stain it? Can you guess? There's a laser filter, and here comes a laser device to create the capsulotomy. Now, the tough part here is that it's so decentered, you really got to get right up against that pupil margin. There you go. And that's a nice, reasonably small capsular opening. Now, putting in uh, iris hooks. I'd love to have lens hooks here instead, but you can put the iris hooks here to grab that lens. Oh, don't poke through the capsule, though. You see how that lens, the tip of the, uh, the iris looks is kind of sharp here and it's going up against the lens capsule back equator. But very gentle here. Try to recenter this lens. Now the question is, are you going to save the bag or are you going to remove it completely? So if you're going to save it, is it going to be sufficiently enough support here? Are you going to do some sort of suture technique here? So a little bit of hydro dissection. Again, the lens nucleus here is soft. This is a young pediatric patient. Think about it. What are the other associations in the eye that are associated with ectopia lentis. Well, you can have the simple ectopia lentis and pupillae. Sometimes aneuritic patients can have issues here, congenital glaucoma, sometimes other types of diseases, RP even, axenfeld riger which we featured for you just a week ago, that can be associated with it. But also, most commonly, is systemic disease like, as you know, Marfan syndrome, probably the most common cause. Also, homocystinuria, wild Marchesi syndrome, sulfide oxidase deficiency, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, Sturge-Weber, all these other random deformities and, and, and syndromes that are very, very rare. Again, those are your board questions. You can learn that on your own. Now, taking out the iris hooks here, and the question is, what are we going to do? You have a nice empty capsular bag here, nice, thick, vitreous, and intact anterior hyaloid face. So what's going to be the technique? Well, measuring back here, it looks like two and a half millimeters, two and a half millimeters back, and maybe doing, okay, probably a Yamane-type technique. So again, getting inside here, let's see the... Choice of lens. I'm watching the video for the first time with you, by the way. Okay, bringing that hollow bore needle outside the main incision. Let's see the technique. What are we going to put in here? There looks like, okay, it looks like a suture. It looks like a proline suture. So probably a 6-0 proline suture, I'm guessing. So maybe a, some sort of flange technique coming up. So threading that through. Yeah, pulling that out. Now, are you going to put in uh, two capsule engine segments, which you could do? Or you're gonna put in a big CTR and then segments. So you're gonna put a Sione, up oh, Sioni ring. So here comes the Sioni ring with a double Sioni ring. Look at that two points of fixation here. It's a little cautery here on that proline for the flash technique here. You see how this this CTR has these two little extra loops there with eyelets. That's a double Sioni ring. So now you can slowly place this in the capsular bag like a CTR, beautiful going around. And then now the hard part's gonna be lining this thing up. And so once you get this in the capsular bag, you want to make sure that eyelet is close to where the center of that zyrona loss is. There we go. And then look and see the little J shape of that eyelet. You want that J above the rexus. You don't want that J, the little, where the eyelet is. The eyelet itself should be a little bit above the rexus, not under it. Ooh, I'd pull that eyelet up a little bit. Again, I'd prefer that eyelet to be up above the rexus, not like it's being caught right now. But again, this will work also. And then there's an eyelet on the other side as well. Not sure if the surgeon used the other eyelet. Here comes the three-piece lens going in the bag. There you go. And dial that in nice and, nice and easy. You see the other eyelet is there. Are we going to use that one as well or call it a day? So maybe you can leave this sufficiently supported for now and maybe come back in the future. You do have a second eyelet. You have a three-piece lens. You have a lot more options if you need to have another surgery in the future. Depends how progressive this zonulopathy is going to be. And this is the end of it. It's not going to be any further progression. Then you're okay. Again, that eyelet of the CTR, of the, of the Sioni ring, I actually like the eyelet above the rexus, not under the rexus. That'll help actually keep it a little bit more centered up. 
But again, beautiful case here. Sealed this up real well. And if it's a pediatric case, I'd definitely put a suture in that main incision. Thanks for sending your video in. I do appreciate it. Great learning case. Remember, check out Retina Rounds, our sister podcast. You're going to learn so much. I promise you're going to love it.